So we have yet another LED bulb here. Um, so I was at Homeless Despot buying the um, the Philips remote phosphor bulb that I didn't, well I've shown in a previous year down. And I'm walking out and there's a big display case of these and they're like 10 bucks. I'm like, curse you, temptation! Um, so these are interesting, you know, this kind of intrigued me because they're, well first of all they're, they're explicitly Cree branded, which is kind of interesting. Um, also amusing is that um, the same supposedly 800 lumens as the Philips bulb, but this is actually uh, uses less power. The Philips was, I think, 12.5, and this one's uh, 9.5. So either LEDs have advanced dramatically in the last few years, and or one or the manufacturers is talking out their posterior. This one's, you know, kind of got like this silly fold-out thing. Cree LED filament tower technology provides a blah blah blah, blah. So it looks and lights like it just. A optically centered light source in real glass. And this is indeed real glass because in the display case of these at the uh, store, several of them were broken. Um, it looks like they, it's uh, plastic coated though, so when the glass breaks it just looks horrible. <laughs> um, I guess this is kind of intended more for situations where the bulb is, is visible in whatever display, you know, like if you have a, a table lamp and you can see the bulb. This is kind of more intended for that because doesn't look as weird as like some of the other LED lights. Usual um, impenetrable packaging. Anyways, so you can kind of make out the LEDs in the middle-ish there. It's an interesting structure and it looks like um, that is not plastic coated glass, that is silicone coated glass. Take a look at that. That's kind of interesting. So it's, um, that's like a, a squishy rubber. That's kind of intriguing. So I wonder if the silicone is also what's holding this in. I'm probably gonna break it and injure myself. Um, so, as you can see, the safety glass seems to be effectively somewhat safety. Alright, so here's the interior of the bulb and you can see really quite an interesting construction. So the first thing that's readily apparent is um, they've got a metal core PCB and it looks like it has been uh, They've machined slots into the rear of it and then folded it around like this round cylinder here, which is connected to the heat shrink. The other thing I noticed is that um, the bulb is glued down with quite a hard epoxy. And one of the things that I think is interesting about this is hey, look, there's no potting. Holla fucking Louia. So uh, obviously, um, you've got, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's 20 LEDs here. And you can kind of see this interesting. Here's the two connections to this. So I'm not sure. These are either in series parallel or just straight up series. Um, it's interesting. I didn't know they could kind of route out the back side of boards like this to make them fold, but I guess it makes sense. Let me... Um, Get my fixture, my test fixture here. So this I would worry about it not being isolated from the mains. So you have to be a little careful here. But um, that's quite nicely bright. Again, um, white balance is a little off because this bench is a, it's a blue white speckle. So the camera white balance is on that, and it has a yellowish tint. But I guess that that's more kind of like a warm tint. Seems to work pretty well. It's already got a little warm. Oops. Anyways, let's see, how does this... It rattles. I think there's this, I think some glass just fell into the housing. So we've got, um, you know, this obvious kind of silly heatsink assembly here. You know, 
I mean, you know, how much more is the reserve they're gaining from these fins? I mean, what is that really? What are they really expected to do? So this base section here is plastic, and then it looks like I see one, two, three. So there's some little, there's some latches there that hold it in. And then of interest is um, that kind of wobbles. So this is not as nicely made as the Phillips bulb, but then the Phillips bulb was very nicely made. So I'm not too bothered by that. It also looks like um, the epoxy they used also flowed down into these little latching tabs and um, made it so that they don't unlatch as easily because it's basically preventing the tabs from backing up. Success. So the bulb Oh boy, the ballast is coming with it. On the other hand, um, hey, that epoxy doesn't seem to hold very well. Yep. I am getting little bits of broken glass everywhere. Mm -hmm. So it looks like I'm going to have to fuck up the socket on this one, like so many of the other ones. I'm turning this into a science by now. One extremely thin, solid core wire running to the ground point, unlike the previous, unlike some other ones which have stranded. Just one little snip. All right, the ground is just connected. Up, oh, and I just pulled the hot off. <laughs> Oops. So there is our board. So. There's our input filter. And now is this, hopefully this can come loose without the board coming with it. Let's see how those interconnect. So, oh wow, look at that. So these are just, that's just spring contacts. I see how this goes together. So this whole base thing pushes in from the look of it. Quite an interesting construction. So it's designed. Oh yeah, look at that. This is neat. Um, so the whole thing is like falls right apart. It's all got little spring-loaded connections. I'm impressed with this. This is very nicely designed. Um, so I think, yeah, see look, we have a, a little latch here. If I just push that over, this whole connection assembly just pops right out. And here's the ballast. Wow, there is just squat there, isn't there? So this is um, obviously a straight offline switcher. There is no isolation here. But I think that, you know, they're probably relying on the fact that you know, they've got a metal core PCB here, so they've probably got much better isolation um, than, you know, than, you know, some of the other solutions. Though actually the Philips LED bulb, I don't seem to have pretty good isolation just based on the construction system. Oh, that's interesting. These are like... It's like a soft gel. It's The LEDs are kind of slightly squishy. Anyways, here is our board. So you can see, um, that's cool, so it's neutral and lined. So we can see here we have, um, this one actually has a, who makes it? It's a little fuse branded fuse. Let me swap lenses one second. So here's the board, and this is a very, this is a really nicely designed board. Um, so. Looks like they're using brand name parts too. I mean, you can see here's the input fuse and it's little fuse branded. And that's cute. They have two vias going over into the pad. So that pad's held on by vias. So you have line and neutral. Um, so this is in series with the neutral L3, which has a resistor across it. That's a 4751, so that's a 47K resistor. Um, bridge rectifier, I would bet. Um, that's probably your switching device. It is a, um, 
SN or no 3N40K3 from um, is that a Fairchild card? Uh, one second. I don't know that manufacturer. Like a root N. Anyway, so here this is a, a 332, so that's probably 3.3 um, nanohenries, I think. Over here we just have um, just two capacitors. 25 volts, 47 mics. That's, I wonder what they're doing with that. And that's got to be like some sort of low voltage something. Um, of interest is the fact that, oh wait, no, there's the controller. Um, so uh, some of the stuff like is pretty stuck down. Um, so that is an L6561 from ST. Oh, that's who made this. this that's an ST logo too. Um, it's just got like gook on it. Flux or something. Yeah, it's ST. So we've got all ST silicon. It's all brand name, which is quite nice. Um, board's basically a single side load. Um, the only stuff over here is through hole. Um, it's got a lot of bits on it. Lots of little tiny stuff. It's quite interesting. Like, look here, you can see here's a. Um, it's done in the, uh, this is in the solder mask rather than the silk screen. They've got like a, a, a barcode, a 2D barcode. Um, this is an LEAO807. There's a little fiducial. So here's, you know, this is a, a 4.7 nanohenry and this is a 3.3 um, nanohenry. So presumably the, um, the, this is going to be a heavier, it's going to have the, the sat current is going to be a lot larger for that. Or higher for that. Oops. Some amusing stuff over here. You can see this is Cree branded and then smiley face and it actually has positive and negative which is quite nice. Um, you can also see down in there. Um, so they've got some capped on tape on this capacitor um, because so this is an LEPO 3426 and it says um, 2012, copyright 2012. So they've got this two layers of capped on tape on here for the look of it because of these um, the two pins from this inductor that poke through the board. Um, who makes this cap? This is a, um, oh hey, it's Nijikon. Wow, this is like quality stuff, man. Um, so that I would guess that this is Nijikon too, but it's I don't see a manufacturer label on that. It just says 2N3F. So here's the um, kind of the board that has all of the diodes on it. And you can kind of see um, this metallic structure stretched around this pillar. Beard hair. So one of the things that I think is kind of interesting here is. Um, the LEDs are kind of squishy. Presumably that's for like bond wires or something. So you can see here's one of the contacts. Here's the other and then there's this assembly here which kind of um, slides up in here like so. Oops. And you can see the um, it just makes contact there and there. And then I'd guess like the current path here kind of goes around or something like that. But um, you can see how to make this, to fold this, they've, um, it looks like they've machined grooves into the back of the um, aluminum substrate. And then that allowed them to kind of fold it onto this. Though it looks like there's some contact issues there. <laughs> um, that's kind of terrible. Um, actually, is this whole thing kind of loose? I don't really feel like it. Uh, 
It's pretty stuck down. I wonder how this is held on. It may they may be using. I don't know. It, it does feel every now and then. I kind of feel like it moved. <laughs> and then so then you have these two contacts here, and then this board. There's um. Are the guide pins? Yeah. So that board just kind of pokes in there like that. And it's just held in by spring force. It just rides on these two surfaces here. There's one there, and then there's that little bracket there. And then this thing just snaps up on the bottom. So this is very much going to be offline. It's going to, um, no isolation at all. You're relying on the, um, the isolation barrier of the uh, aluminum substrate FR4 for your protection so that you don't get shocked or anything from the, uh, you know, the line voltage. But, you know, I think that, you know, this stuff's probably rated for that, so they shouldn't have any concerns about that. And we've got more barcodes, and looks like some overspray from when they spray painted this. And this is probably just pot metal as well, with their high quality paint job. So that's quite a cute little fixture. I mean, this was ten bucks. Um, and I can definitely see how they've managed to do a lot of cost cutting to keep, you know, to make it so cheap. But nevertheless, I mean, it's nice to see, you know, ST, ST, brand name, Little Fuse, Fuse, you know, 500 milliamps. So it's all brand name uh, electronics. It's just, um, you know, they, they've kind of cut corners where they can from the look of it and not anywhere else. Um, so let's see, how does this... So in this white housing, there are some board supports, and how do they go? Oh, I see. So, yeah, it's got to be. So, it looks like, um, yeah, like that. So, then just the kind of the little ass end here pokes out, and then you just have the two connections. And then that prevents the board from pulling too far back out. So, yeah, this is nice, because I can definitely repurpose this kind of as a unit. Um, though, I'll have to make sure it's installed somewhere where people can't kind of stick their fingers into it. Or of course, I could install it somewhere people can stick their fingers into it, and it'll just improve the gene pool. Um, I'm not quite that sociopathic, at least not yet in any event. Here's the epoxy that held the bulb in. You can kind of see it's it's very hard. Um, it's kind of the bulb peeling out. <laughs> just hit it with a flashlight. I might try and see if I can peel. Anyways, there you go. So there's a um, a cheap $10 Cree 60 watt LED bulb.